please let's have our seats. Praise the Lord. This morning we want to, please help me change this volume a bit. Um, let us have some trouble. Praise Jesus. Sorry, we'll just go straight to the word of God because most of the time we're going to worship. The time is gone and I don't want to keep us more than necessary. It's not a Thanksgiving service, so we must finish at the normal time. Amen. The Lord will bless you this morning, in Jesus' name. Second Kings chapter 7, I want us to read from verse 1. Second Kings chapter 7 from verse 1. Remember today is Rabbi Sunday. Is Rabbi what? And what does Rabbi mean? It's a teaching day. Praise the Lord. So today you may not be binding and losing. Just bring out your pen and then your writing materials, your paper, so that you and I can be encouraged together. Praise the Lord. Then in the gate of Samaria, then the Lord in whose hand the king leaned and sat the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would take windows, would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thy eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. And we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we shall die. We die also. Now therefore come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they, have, they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no, no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel had hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. We stopped there. You read the remaining one at home. Praise the Lord. I hope every time I say you read the remaining one at home, do you really read them? Praise the Lord. God will help us. This morning, I want to speak to you about confused noise in the enemy's camp. But what I want to show you this morning is very simple. Who are the people that will cause noise in the camp of the enemy? Who are the people that God will use to cause noise in the camp of the enemy? Every time the Lord gives me a word, I, I, I will just keep asking, I need a confirmation that this is your will, that I'm not doing something wrong. And when we came for our workers meeting this morning, the man of God who was teaching us just went straight to two issues that I want to use. I just said while I was standing there, Holy Spirit, thank you. Praise the Lord. Because when I woke up in the middle of the night, I was asking the Lord, is this the right word for this time? They've heard enough about this topic. Let me move on and teach something else. And I was just saying, in the Holy Ghost way, meaning many more. How do you say it now? And I was just, is this this one? Is this this one? And the Holy Spirit brought me back here. Praise the Lord. So this morning, I'm going to show to you three 
major character, three major qualities of men that God will use to cause noise in the camp of the enemy. Three major character. And when you see such characters in any man, just know that these ones are going to cause problem to the pit of hell. I pray for you that God will use you to cause confusion in the camp of your enemies. In the name of Jesus. Let's go straight to the what we have for this morning. Go back with me to 2 Kings chapter 7. Let's read that verse 4. Or let's start from verse 3 so that we, we get it well. And there were four leprous men. Now get the story very well. Samaria was surrounded by a host of army. Strong, fortified. The Bible said they surrounded the city so much that nothing could go in. Nothing was coming out. And there was a great famine. The famine was so bad that men began to eat horses, horses meat. Praise the Lord. When they finished all the horses in the land, men began to eat themselves. If you go to chapter 6, the last four verses or five verses before here, the Bible said, talk about two women who agreed to eat their children during the famine. Praise the Lord. And the first woman brought a child and they killed the child and they boiled her and eat. The second day, to bring the child of the other woman, the woman has hid a child. And the case was brought before the king. That will tell you how bad the famine was. There are some of us who are in severe famine. Even to eat is difficult for you. To drink is difficult for you. I'm not even talking about wearing clothes. I'm not talking about paying house rent. I'm not talking about paying bills, school fee. Just to eat is difficult. And so when the king heard this story, he said, God save this man called Elisha if I don't remove his head by tomorrow. The famine was so bad and God was searching all over the land. Who will I use to bring a change? And he found four leprous men. Number one, quality of the people that God will use. Number one, leprous men. Write it down. I'm going to explain to you. Leprous men. Now I'll give you an idea what it means to have leprosy. And I'll give you, turn with me to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17 from 11 to 13. A short one. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers. We stood where? They stood, eh? say it again. They stood afar. It is forbidden for a leper to enter the city. It's forbidden. If a leopard is walking by the Jewish tradition, he must hold a bell. And he uses that bell and he's coming, he'll be saying, unclean, unclean, unclean. Because if a leopard is walking and he touches somebody that is not a leopard, they will kill that leopard instantly. So the only not to die, every leopard in the days of Jesus must hold a bell unclean, unclean, unclean. So they put them outside the city. 
Now listen this morning. God is looking for men that are outside the city. Not men inside the city. God is looking for men that are not part of the city. What is the city? I will guide you again. Turn with me to Luke, the same Luke. Luke chapter 17 from verse 26. Let me show you how this city looked like. How the city looked like. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Let's go ahead. Likewise also, as it was in the days of, of Lord, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, and they builded. But the day, but the same day that Lord went out of Sodom, it rained what? Fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even false shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, it shall be upon the housetop he that she's upon the house stove and his stuff is in the house. Let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Who are the people in the city? Very simple. People that are eating and drinking, feasting. People that live careless life. Those are city people. Have you seen this magazine called City People? What, what do you see in that magazine? Men and women which nails are as long as this. Women that has five rings in their fingers. Those who have shoes as high as this and they'll be walking like this. Men that wear trousers like look like women trousers. So tight and they'll be walking like women. In the city, you have homosexuals, lesbians, adulterers, fornicators. God is looking for men that are outside the city. Not men in the city. The Bible says we must all go to meet Jesus outside the city. When they were to kill Jesus, you know where they took him? They took him outside the city. To the highest point. And the Bible says that those who are going to be part of Jesus will be men that will meet him outside the city. If you don't come out of the city, you may end like lost wife. God is looking for leprous men, people who are outside the city. People who have been cast out that do not belong to this world. Those who have separated themselves from immorality, from sin, from lying, from deceit, from wickedness, from deception. Those who go from behind. Are you in the city or are you outside the city? Where do you belong? Leprous men are people that have separated themselves from city life, from city people. People that have given themselves to fashion, people that have given themselves to eating and drinking and feasting continuously. Their life is a continuous feasting. Go with me to a very popular scripture I use every time. First Timothy 5, 6. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 6. But she that liveth in what? Pleasure. What has happened to her? Is dead. Even while he's still living. God is looking for leprous men. Men that have left the city. 
they are not part of the city life anymore. Men who have separated themselves from sin. Men who have separated themselves from immorality. Men who have separated themselves from the things of this world. I was discussing with the ministers this morning and I was telling the way we were praying. When Moses called and he said he wanted to see God, God laughed. He said, you want to see me? You don't understand who I am. And when he persisted, God said, okay, climb the mountain. When he got to the mountain, God said, come to the pinnacle of the mountain. When he got there, God said, go up again to the highest point such that at that point, any mistake, Moses could fall and scatter. And what was the message? Very simple. God is saying that those who will come to know him must be people who have separated themselves from people. Those who have separated themselves from the crowd. Those who have separated themselves from the city. You are too contaminated by city life. The Bible said the leprous men were at the gate of the city. They were not allowed to come in. In my early days as a child, my mother, my mother had one of his sons. Then I was still a young man, a, a child. I should say I should be less than my teens. I should be between 14 or 15. I don't know. Somewhere around there. This, my elder brother, gave his life to Christ. God born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. Every morning he will wake up, he will be singing, he will be dancing. When he's walking, when he's leaving the house and he's going, he'll be singing, he'll be dancing. You know what we call him? We said, I was among them, that he was mad. So when we go out and we meet our brother, we dodged. We didn't want people to know that he was our brother. Because Otigba were a mercy. That was what we said. And so we so mocked him and mocked him and mocked him until he came back into the world. Today he can't be rescued. I'm part of those people who brought him back into the world. Today he has a mental problem. Because we didn't understand what salvation is until when I got born again. Yay! Is this the joy? I tried everything to pray him back. But he has not yet been brought back to today. God is looking for leprous men. People who have separated themselves from the city. Who have gone mad for salvation. Gone mad for the gospel, gone mad for the kingdom. Not men that are clean, men that he will use. I don't know which city you belong. I don't know. In Matthew chapter 3, from verse 1 to 5. I will just read verse 5. Can we see verse 5? Look at what the Bible says. Then went out to him, Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the regions round about. Where was John the Baptist living? He was living in the wilderness. He was not living in the city. The whole Jerusalem and Judea will go and meet him there. He will preach for them, baptize them. They will go back. They will say, John, come back. He says, no, I do not belong to the city. This is where I belong. Those are the kind of people that will cause noise in the camp of the enemy. Men that are outside the city. And that is why today, the name of John the Baptist is still ringing bell. 
Today, you take pride in being called a Christian. Do you know what it is to be called a Christian in the days of the apostle? A Christian is the people that are rejected. It was a name given to people that are outcast. They never live in the midst of people. Which city do you belong? Genesis chapter 19 from verse 1 I will read verse 1 then I jump to verse 12 Genesis 19 verse 1 and there came two angels to Sodom at even and Lord sat where did he sit? at the gate of Sodom Lot did not enter into the city of Sodom. He knew it was an immoral city. That was a city. So he sat at the gate. He was not inside of the city. That was where the angels met him. And said, quick up! Something is about to happen to the city. Let's speak from verse 12. So that we don't kill our time. And the man said unto Lot, How's I here? Any besides? Son in law and thy sons and thy daughters. And what's over the house in the city? Bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And Lord went out and spake unto sons in law which married his daughters and said, Up! Get you out of this place. For the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked. <laughs> they look at Lord. Only yeah, yeah, old man. Old man, don't make him. Old age, don't make him go mad. They began to mock him. You get home, finish this story. Get your son, get your daughter. Come out of the city. Get out, get out. The city is about to be destroyed. They looked at him. Men and brethren, I came to tell you this morning, if you don't come out of the city, this city will be destroyed. The city life is for people that are bound for destruction. So the Bible said the lepers who are the gates of the city. And God said, yeah, these are the people I want to use. Men that are separated. Get them for me. Let me use them. God is looking for people that the world have cast away, that have rejected. Go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 22. First Samuel chapter 22. From verse 1. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave at Dulam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And they were with about 400 men. These men lived outside the city. They lived inside caves, mountains. God said, these are the people I'm looking for, that I might use. Which city do you belong? You belong to the city of liars. City of thieves. City of homosexuals. City of adulterers and fornicators. 
city of men that do not change. Constantly hearing the word, but never coming to understanding. Coming to church every Sunday, every Tuesday, every Thursday. But they remain the same. Which city do you belong? God is looking for people outside the city that he will use to shake. You know when our Father and the Lord the general overseer of this mission the Lord spoke to him come out of the city go to the bush because I've already left this city and today that's the city that you and I call redemption camp the Bible said Abraham looked for a city that was not built by men he left where he was God said come I'm taking you to another city. For this city, it will not stand. I warn you this morning, if you don't come out of this city, you may not survive. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship are the righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion had light with darkness? And what accord, what concord had Christ with Belial? Or what part had he that believed with an infidel? And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For you are a temple. For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, what should you do? Come out from among them. Be ye separate. Said the Lord. Touch not unclean thing. And what will I do? I will receive you. Come out. From the city that you dwell in. Let me show you Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 1. It's a very long one, but I want us to read it. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 1. Very instructive. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for his sweet smelling sour. But fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking not jesting. You know one of the things I discovered? You and I do the same thing. When you're talking about a friend, your friend, maybe he didn't do something right or so. You say, the guy, fuck up. The guy, fuck up. Dirty language in the mouth of the body of Christ. Dirty. Things that should not come out of your mouth. You say it. You just open your mouth and speak anyhow. Which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Let's go ahead, please. Let no man deceive you. For this you know, that no warmonger, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, at an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ of God. Let no man deceive you with these vain words. For because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye therefore, be not ye therefore, partakers with them. For you are sometimes what? Darkness. But now, what are you? light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. 
For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done in them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the lie. For whatsoever doth make manifest is lie. When you get home, read it in verse 18. When you call yourself a Christian and the things you do, the things you say, even you yourself, you can't say it outside. This is what you do. Because you know it brings shame. Come out of the city of liars. Come out of the city of thieves. Come out of the city of fornicators. Come out of the city of adulterers. Come out of the city of killers, of kidnappers. I don't know which city you belong, but God is saying, if you want me to use you, I'm looking for men that do not stay inside the city. Number two, who are the people God will use to cause noise in the camp of the enemy? Look at verse 4. 2 Kings chapter 7 verse 4. Number one, what did I say? Leprous men. And what does leprosy mean spiritually? Men that have separated themselves. That's all. If you can't remember anything, just speak that. Men that are separated. That's what it means. If you don't separate yourself from this world, you will not escape. I'm telling you the truth. You will not. If you don't separate yourself from people, what people do, what they do in your family, what they do in your house, what they do in your village, what they do in your community. If you don't separate, the first thing God told Abraham, he said, come out from your father's house. Separate. Come out first. But let's go to the next thing. What is man? What is God looking for? Those who will cause noise in the camp of the enemy. Verse 4. He said, if we say we will, if we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. Who are the people that God will use to cause noise in the camp of the enemy? Number two, dead men. God is looking for dead men. Men that are dead. Listen, check that scripture very well. Before those guys left that place, they knew, they said, look guys, we are dead. Let's go. God is looking for men that do not count their life. That their life is nothing. And they are ready to go to any land for the kingdom. They are ready to go to any point. The little progress Nigeria made in the days of the Zig, the Awolo Wars, because these men were ready to sacrifice anything, they were ready to die. People like us who were sent to school by Awolo philosophy, free education. He sent me to school. So we went to school free without paying any fee. These guys, they believed in their philosophy and they were ready to die for it. And that's the little progress Nigeria made was made by this man. The Zeke of this war. The Bible, they call him Zeke of Africa. Check. Do you see any company that bears their name? You can't see. They were ready to die. But the politicians that you vote for now, how much have they given you? 
They gave you 100 naira to vote for them. After voting for them, can you get to their house? Can you even press their bell? Look at our generation. It's a shameful one. They equip people and put bomb in their body. But their children are in Harvard University. University of Massachusetts. All kinds all over the world. You and I voted for them. You know when they came for Jesus? When Jesus, when they came to Pontius Pilate and he told them, this guy has not done anything. He said, what do you want? He said, they said, kill him. Give us Barabbas. Who was Barabbas? The Bible said, a notorious thief. Listen to me. You and I are those who have called for Barabbas. And Barabbas will not let you and I go until you change this nation. The Barabbas are in the Senate and the House of Reb. They will finish you and I. Give us Barabbas. We don't want Jesus. Kill him. Let him go. It's of no word. They have released Barabbas to you and I. We will endure it. Men who are not ready to give up anything for you. God is looking for dead men. People will not think about their wife, their sons or daughters how they are coming. Say so this thing we believe in it. Is it that we, it is done or we die? Esther say if I perish, I perish. This matter must be settled. Men were in the city eating and feasting. Four leprous men said if we stay here we die. If we go we die. Let us go and die. You know why you are now remain like this? Because you don't want to die. This South African reggae reggae musician, Lucky Dube, he said, everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. I'll see how you want to enter it. By rapture, Abi. Okay. Don't worry, the rapture is coming. Genesis chapter 22 from verse 1. I don't have the time to read all that. But you know the story. God called Abraham after he had waited 25 years for a child. And I think I've made, I've made things clearer to you here before. But maybe for the sake of those who may be coming here for the first time, let me just explain again. Abraham was 75 years when the Lord called him. And by the year 100, he had his first child, making 25 years. Is that correct? That's correct. That's very true. But did Abraham marry Sarah when he was 75? No. Abraham married Sarah where well, the Bible didn't tell us. But let's assume that Abraham was 40 years old when he got married. Let's assume he, got, he was 40 years old. From 40 to 100, how many years did he stay? 60 years. And after waiting for that one child, God said, pack that child, take him up to go and slaughter for me. And Abraham took Isaac and began to go. And took him right to where God has shown him. And put the boy right on the platform. And God was looking at him. His son asked him, this is there, this is there, this is there, this is there. But where is the ram? He said, don't worry. God was looking at this man. And the next thing, this man went into his bag brought out a dagger well sharpened tied the boy and the next thing and God shouted from heaven Abraham you are a dead man you mean you want to kill this boy (laughs) 
And God swore. He said, Abraham, <laughs> for what you have done, anybody who touch you has touched me. Anybody who bless you, I will bless. Anybody who curse you, I will curse. Any, even if a fly fly in front of you, I will use atomic bomb to kill that fly. Men, go and read your Bible very well. I've said it here before. The Isaac that went to that place is not the Isaac that came back. Isaac actually died there. The one that came back is the spiritual Isaac. Until you die, you can be fruitful. The Bible says the corn is sown on the ground. It has to die first before it can bring forth. God is looking for dead men. In 1 Chronicles chapter 11 from verse 16 to 18 maybe we will read that one. 1 Chronicles chapter 11 from verse 16 the Bible talk about the men of David. And David was then in the hold and the Philistine garrison was then at Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that thou will give me the drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem that is in the gates. And the three break through the hosts of the Philistines. And drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. But David would not drink of it but pour it out to the Lord. What's happening there? David was outside in his normal way to go and fight. And where he was, he became thirsty. He said, wow, who will give me the water of, Be of, of Bethlehem? That's the water I want to drink. And the Bible said, three of his men came out. Say, Baba, is water you want to drink, the water of Bethlehem? He said, we'll go and get it for you. When they got there, the Bible said there were three garrisons of soldiers there. Over 3,000 soldiers. Three people broke through 3,000 soldiers and fetched water. When they brought it to David, David looked at it and said, Yay, this is blood. This is not water. You know what he meant? He knew that they would have killed so many people for them to carry that water. He said, No, I'm not worthy to take this water. He gave it to the Lord. God is looking for dead men that he will use. Your life is too valuable to you. That's why you are not making progress. My wife, my son, my daughter, my car, my house, my streets, my gold, my house in Dubai. The one in Lekki, that's why you are not sleeping. My bank account. This guy said if we stay outside the city, we are dead. If we go into the city, we are dead. Say, let's go and die. Three men put their life at jeopardy and brought water to David. David said, no, this is not water. This is blood. You want God to use it to bring noise in the camp of the enemy? Listen to me. You must die. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. What did Paul tell you and I? I am crucified. I'm a dead man. I'm dead. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 31, Paul said, I die 
clearly nothing is of value anymore to me so I'm a dead man in Philippians chapter 1 verse 21 he said to live to die is gain to live is Christ And so when these guys left that gate of Samaria, they went purely to die. They went to die. But when they got to the gates, when they entered the city, they found gold and silver. Until you are ready to die, you may not locate your gold and your silver. The Bible says when they got there, they didn't meet anybody. Let me show you the CV of this man called Paul. I call it his CV. And every time I read it, I ask God to help me. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 23. Look at this guy's CV. Are the ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors, more abundant. He stripes above measure. In prison, frequent. In death, often. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. At night and at day, I have been in the deep. In journeys, often. In perils of waters. In Paris of robbers, in Paris of my own countrymen, in Paris by the heathen, in Paris in the city, in Paris in the wilderness, in Paris in the sea, in Paris among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, beside those that are without, that which come upon me daily, the care of all the churches, who is weak, and I'm not weak. Who is offended and I born not. If I must need glory, I will glory in these things that has to do with my infirmities. God is looking for dead men that he will use for this generation. The reason why Nigeria is not yet ready to change, you have not, we have not yet found people who are ready to die. The reason why your family has not changed because there's nobody there to say, I'm ready to die to bring this change. The reason why the church has not changed, there's nobody who has said, I'm ready to die for this cause. But what do you have? All kinds of manipulators. As you have outside, so you have in the church. So there's no difference between the church and the outside. Number three, don't let me waste your time. Who are the people? that will bring noise in the camp of the enemy. Look at verse 5. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And they rose up in the twilight. This man was not just Boasters, they were not just talkers, talkative. Immediately they said that the Bible said they rose up and they began to move. Who are the people that God will use to stir up noise? Men of faith. What did I call them? Men of faith, not talkers. There are too many talkers in the church, it's too many storytellers. Too many people who are ready to correct, but they are not ready to move. You know, we came for a program yesterday, and one of the three examples given of a man who was called to come and preach. And when he got there, he picked John chapter 1 from verse 1. And he just read everything that was John chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 3. And he asked his congregation, Is that the way it's written in your Bible? They say, Yes, say, that is what Jesus means. And he left. Nothing will change. 
until you make a move. God is just waiting for you to make a move. First Samuel chapter 14 from verse 1 to 3. First Samuel chapter 14 from verse 1 to 3. Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan the son of Saul said unto the young man, to the young man that bare his armor, come, let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that is on the other side. But he told not who? His father. When you get to please finish this story because of time. Let me tell you what's happening there. There was war between Israel and the Philistines. The Philistines was on this side. Israel was on this side. The captain of the host of Israel was the king himself, Saul. And they were on this side talking, telling stories, strategizing, thinking, planning, wasting time. Jonathan said, oh boy, I'm tired of this story. Let's go. The Bible said, Jonathan took his armor bearer, his servant, and sneak out of the crowd where story was going on where talking was going on and he went and Jonathan single-handedly gave Israel victory because of the move that he made God is just waiting for you to make one move just one move just one move Caleb said give me this mountain. He says, I was 40 years ago, so I am now. Give me this mountain. Let me go and possess it. And Joshua looked at him. He said, go. Today, that mountain is still under the hand of Israel. Because somebody dared to move. God is waiting for men of faith. When you go to Hebrews chapter 11, maybe we will read that place. Hebrews 11 from verse 33. So that we can round up. Hebrews 11 from verse 3. Who through faith subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtain promises, stop the mouths of liars, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong. Wax valiant in fire, turn to fly the armies of the enemy of the aliens. Can we go ahead? Women receive their dead raised from life to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Praise the Lord. God is just looking for one move from you to give you your breakthrough, but you have refused to move. Three lights. Immediately the four lepers move. Commotion started in the camp of the enemy. I've told you three things that will bring noise in the camp of the enemy. Number one, leprous men. Number two, and number three, stand on your feet. You are a good student. Thank you, Father. I don't know which city you belong but I trust God for you that your story will change this morning lift up your hands and worship my God mighty warrior great in battle Jehovah is Jehovah your name
lift up your voice and speak to the Lord. Oh Lord, I want to be used. I want to be used by you. I'm available for you. I'm available. your gold and silver is still waiting for you. All he's just asking for, make one move. This morning our father was teaching us that life is all about risk. How he left his work as a professor of mathematics to go and be a full-time pastor. How his salary was reduced from what it was. They were giving him gift of 50 cobalt but he made a move. But look at him today. He drives on private jet all over the world because of one move that he made. Today, when he enters any country, president of nations receive him. A man who was once living in Mushi in one room today goes all over the world because he made a move. I want to encourage you this morning. God is saying there's somebody I want to use to make a move this morning. Just make a move. There's something I want to do in your life. You want to give your life to Christ, please come forward. Just one move is enough. Just take one step. One step of faith. That's what God is asking for. You want to give your life to Jesus, please come. I want to pray with you. God wants to do something in your life. Don't miss this day. It's just one move. Just one step is enough to do the deal. Just one move. Just one move. It settles your case. You have long delayed this day. Just one move will settle this matter. Just one. Just one move. Just one move. Please come. Today is your day. Don't delay that move. God has been waiting for it. For long, please come. You don't need to be ashamed. We were once there. Please come. God is calling you. We see our five of you in this assembly. Five of you. Please come. God is speaking to you that this is your day. This is your day. Wherever you are, don't allow the devil to deceive you. The day you have been waiting for has finally come. Just one move. The Bible says at twilight, as they move, at that same twilight, there was commotion in the camp of the enemy. There's more of you there. Where are you? I'm waiting for you. I'm ready to waste time because of you. Come. I give you two more minutes. Please come. I encourage you. Please come. It is your day. Don't stop the move of God. Let's appreciate them as they come forward. Clap for Jesus. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Come. It's your day. Jesus is the way. Come, wherever you are, it's your day. Jesus is the answer. It's your day. 
Just come, just come, just come. Let's come for Jesus as they come. It's your day. The service was organized for you. Come, it's waiting. One move will settle your case. One move will settle it. pray together these ones that have come before the Lord I pray for you that you will not delay your move the move that will take you to your inheritance I took that move long ago in those days Pastor Patrick Awonzia Zoe Ministry he used to come to Suleri Alan Falulu he used to organize a crusade along Falulu Road, as you enter Falulu before you get to Garden of Peace. That was where we met the Lord. I'd first given my life to Christ during my youth service in a deeper life church. And it looked like a, something that was impossible. But today, I do not regret it. I do not. I can tell you we suffered persecution. We suffered pain. It was even worse when we entered into full-time ministry. My God, it's not an experience you want to hear of. It was not palatable. Go and read today's open heaven and hear what our daddy said. Anyone who has a call must go down first. That's the way God operates. He takes you down first. Bruise your nose on the ground. And it checks your heart. Are you ready? Say, good, now let's go. The move that will take you to your inheritance, you will not, God will cause you to make that move. Yeah. Let's stretch our hands and pray for these ones that are standing before us. Men and brethren that are before the altar, just say, Lord, I have made that my move. Show me mercy. I have made that move. I ask for your mercy. Whatever unrighteousness you have found in me, I bring myself before you this morning. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Please stand on your feet. I want us to pray together. Stand on your feet. Those of you that are kneeling down on the altar, please stand. Please stand. Let's clap for Jesus for them. We're going to pray together. Just one prayer. I'm already out of time. Maybe two prayers before they go. Praise the Lord. God, when that siege was over Samaria, heaven was crying, who will I use? Who will make a move for me? Who will move for me to scatter the enemy? And God, I'm sure God was just pacing up and down his throne. Who, who, who will move? He went into the city. He couldn't find anybody. He went around. He couldn't find. And he found this four leprous man. And the guy said, if we stay here, we leave. If we go there, we die. He said, let's go and die. And God said, wow! The people have been waiting for. And immediately they move. It's confusion. You are going to pray that move that will take you into your inheritance you will make that move today some of you may have to make a move in the place of business some of you may have to make a move in the place of marriage different places some of you may have to make a move in investment some of you may have to make a move I don't know where but something need to move in your life so that you can enter where God has destined for you are you ready to pray this morning Lift up your voice. Say, Father. Father. I didn't hear you. Say, Father. Father. Every.
every move I need to make to enter my blessing. Say, Father, help me this morning. Open your mouth and pray. Every move I need to make to enter my blessing. Every move every move I need to make to enter my joy to enter my healing to enter my breakthrough men and brethren pray I didn't tell you to kill any witchcraft today just say Lord help me to make that move that move that will open the door to my blessing that move that will take me to my inheritance that move that will open my heavens in Jesus name we pray the second prayer, lift your voice, say Father say Father every siege over my life in the name of Jesus be broken open your mouth and pray every siege every siege over my home every siege Jesus name we pray the last prayer the Bible said the Syrians that were there immediately these guys move you know what they were hearing they began to hear the sounds of horses of chariots and of mighty men wow what is coming the Bible said they ran and left everything lift your voice say father Every illegal occupant sitting in my place of blessing scatter open your mouth and pray every illegal occupant that have taken my place of blessing every illegal occupant Anyone sitting in the place of my blessing, the place of my inheritance, scatter them, let them make a noise, bring confusion. Jesus name we pray let me appreciate these guys who came at first to give their life please clap for them men and brethren I can tell you that I'm proud of you I did what you did some 20 years ago and I'm not regretting I'm proud of you. Somebody's going to minister to you. Just a few minutes. Give them your data, your name, your address, your phone number. If you want people to visit you, you put it there. And after that, we'll, the young man is there standing. Let's go now. Let's clap for Jesus as they go. Just go. Just go. God bless you. 
Lift your voice, lift your hands. Let me pray for you. I want your amen to sound like thunder. Every illegal occupant sitting in the place of your blessing, I scatter them in the name of Jesus. Every siege over your inheritance, over your blessing, I command by the thunder of heaven, let that siege break in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. As you go from here, you enter your inheritance. You enter your blessing. You enter your joy. You enter your healing. So shall it be. If you believe in shout hallelujah.